What is up, y'all, and welcome back to the last law in our Kybalian series, the law of gender. Now, nobody get mad, nobody get upset. It will all make sense by the end. Uh, it may or may not be the oldest feud in all of humanity, uh, men versus women, um, but that's actually not technically what <laughs> the law of gender has to do with. Um, quote from the Kybalian is, gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. So, what is gender? And gender has to be differentiated from sex because we're not talking about sex. When we talk about gender, it comes from the Latin root to beget, to, proc to procreate, to generate, to create, to produce. So gender basically is about creation. And what do we know about creation? Well, how do you create a new being? There are genders involved when creating a new human being, for example, right? That doesn't just happen. That you have to have the two come together. And so Sex, on the other hand, would be the differentiation just between male and female living things. So just to bro broadly generalize between the two sexes of the male and the female, that would be like a differentiation of sex. But we're talking about gender, which is much, it's the level up from that where gender is basically a combination of the masculine and feminine in order to create. So sex would be a manifestation of gender on the physical plane. Sex is the manifestation on the physical plane of gender. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and so within everything, though, is a masculine and feminine principle. We all have every... We, Everything, including living beings, non-living beings, everything has its masculine and its feminine side, its positive and its negative side. It's, um, the, it's the two, our, our reality is bipolar. That's what we've been seeing all throughout the Kybalian series. These are the two sides. And so now we're at the point of, well, in the, in the law of cause and effect, we were looking at this side causes this side. Because once you're over here, it has to swing back to the other side because everything's technically all one and we're on this this rhythm between these poles that's creating our reality and how do we how do we have this creation happen well the two have to come together to create the third and so we have i i am physically male but i have masculine and feminine attributes um everybody does moving on um so in atoms, for example, they have protons and electrons, which would be the masculine and feminine subatomic sub particles. They also have uh, neutrons, which if you know anything about the Kabbalah, there's the pillar of mercy, pillar of severity, and the pillar of mildness. Interesting. And um, there's the three triads on the tree, which is interesting. Um, but the positive and the negative came together, and then they created that atom atom they were no longer just sub subatomic particles charged to a particular degree they came together and created but they don't lose the fact that they're positive or negative they, now this atom has positive and negative in in it whereas before the two were separate and they came together but even then they probably you know everything still has its masculine and feminine parts i'm not super scientific so this is more of an example um if you'd like to read more in depth the, the kybalian gives a very scientific explanation about um using atoms and sort of chemicals and chemical science to explain um gender on the physical plane um because the atoms seem to seek each other out to form these chemicals which is interesting right the ma the masculine fe seeking the feminine the feminine seeking the masculine in order to create new which is that law of gender so uh interesting how nature works that way right <laughs> um but yeah you could uh, trees drop their masculine seeds into the feminine earth um 
and another example that I always like using is um, the example of like, let's say you're using a pen and paper, right? Well, the pen would be the masculine agent applying the ink to the feminine agent, the paper, to create, let's say, a poem, right? Now you have a poem. What is a poem? Well, a poem, sure, it's maybe it's ink on um, paper, right? But you're creating this new thing which wouldn't have existed otherwise, and it's no longer either of those things, it's a new created thing that came from both of them. So the masculine acting on the feminine, causing the feminine to create. So the masculine is directive, it directs the energy toward the feminine. It's a, it's a matter of will, it's a matter of directed energy that's moving, there's intent, and the feminine is receptive and creative. It's manipulative. It's organizational. It takes that energy and all of this information, all of these things from the masculine, and it knows what to do with them, and then it creates. Creation is always on the feminine side. That happens on all planes. Feminine is responsible for creation. And again, like our example with the with the pen and the paper, the poem wouldn't exist without the pen, but the paper is what stays behind, right? The paper is there. Feminine is what creates it. Um, you know, little nuances. Um, so everything has its masculine and its feminine within it, and the masculine and the feminine come together. They are necessary for creation. Pretty self-explanatory if, you know, if you've been around the world and you've seen how the world works, yes, men and women come together, the masculine and the feminine comes together, and then there's creation that happens. Um, but gender also exists mentally on, on the mental plane. And in fact, we have two minds. We have our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. We are dual minded. We have the masculine mind, the conscious mind, and the feminine mind, the subconscious mind. And the conscious mind, the masculine, acts upon the subconscious mind, the feminine, and then the feminine subconscious mind uses what the conscious mind gave it to create. The conscious mind is uh, responsible for filtering out things that go into the subconscious mind and to direct intentional things into the subconscious mind. But the subconscious mind is what manifests, the subconscious mind is what creates. Subconscious mind is also what takes care of your internal organs. That's how that works. Um, so it's taking care of a lot of different stuff. The subconscious mind also works in um, symbols, symbols and imagery. Um, whereas the conscious mind likes language and explanation and the finer details. <laughs> um, but that is basically what magic is. Taking that masculine, combining it with the feminine to create. Creating mentally is magic using your conscious mind to seed your subconscious mind with an intent and having that intent be manifest which brings us to well how would that work and that's because thoughts are things thoughts are vibrational things there are um many different um, accounts of the multiplicity of the bodies that we have we have a physical body an emotional body a mental body an astral body um and the mental body um, vibrates, and when we have thoughts, these thoughts are literal vibrations, um, perhaps not in a spectrum that human scientists could measure yet, but these thoughts are things. And so this, these thoughts being transferred between our subconscious and our conscious mind are what are emanating out and causing these things to manifest in the world. Um, and on that note, thoughts are also things in the sense that we can use our thoughts and our intent to convey things to other people by way of thought transference. And this can come across in very, very many ways. And this would be the basics of all psychic phenomena, you know, talking about telepathy, this and that. And I'm not going to get bogged down by any of that here and the ins and outs. Or, or legitimacy of any of that, but it is a thing and that's that would be the basics of how it works is the thoughts are the things, the thoughts are real and that thoughts can be used either, um, let's say, um, oh, why can't I think of the word? They're either being used consensually with other people or not, which would bring me to what I would really want to talk about would be to think, start thinking of what types of, um, pieces of 
of thoughts or intent or will are you letting into your mind against your will or unknowingly um, against your will, i.e. any type of visual media? Um, what, it, what are they putting into your mind? And perhaps if there were someone who knew that this law worked this way, they could potentially use that to their advantage by placing symbols and imagery um, of a certain nature directed by a certain will into your subconscious in order to manifest en masse or um, within you personally. Um, and that's where that conscious mind comes into play of having the awareness to filter out certain um, symbols and imagery and intents and will that you do not want to seed into your subconscious. Um, because if you're not aware of these things, then it's very likely that that's happening um, all the time, which would kind of go back to our slight segment in the law of cause and effect, where we were talking about what is the cause to every effect. And let's say, um, you know, we talked about free will. Well, what do you want? Um, sure, you want that. That's your free will to want that. But what's the want behind that want? Why do you want that? And this is could be potentially one of them. Well, you know, why were you thinking about that restaurant? Well, you don't realize that your subconscious got seated by an ad in a certain way that caused it to come back and now you want that you know like the whole point of advertising basically um or maybe you're something you know you you could see a movie that could have symbolism in it um and whether let's say the creator didn't even know that this law is in effect but that seated on your subconscious and then is manifesting in your life um, maybe, for example, you were you were exposed to a movie you were not supposed to see as a child, and that seeded so deeply into your subconscious mind because your conscious mind didn't know how to filter that out and deal with it, that it's causing effects into your life all the way into today. So, um, simple things like that to be an idea, but the ba the main point would be that your mind is dual; it's masculine and feminine, and by using the duality of your m mind along the lines of gender we can create and that is what magic is and that is how it brings us full scale all the way back to the law of mentalism the very first law of the kaibalian which is that all is mind there is the all the all is creating and it creates mentally and this is how it creates how does it create well we go back to the second law <laughs> and so we go back and so it's all a huge loop of how all of these things come into being um, and like I was saying the whole time all laws are just one law and these are the iterations of the laws and we need these iterations of the laws but they really are one law um, everything's true and not true at the same time all have all truths are half-truths and all paradoxes can be reconciled um, sorry the Kybalian is riffing right now the the hermitists is riffing right now because it's all coming full circle but so that would be that would be the basics of it all um, the masculine and the feminine come together with gender and by creating with our masculine mental mind then we see the feminine subconscious and our mind as a whole the two parts as a whole being masculine seeds the universe the feminine and then we create together and so you can start extrapolating out into all of those lines but that being said this is going to be the end of this video. Um, I almost just went deep into like a big recap and kind of like going into everything, but that's going to be the next video. Um, and we are almost at the end. If you stuck in there with me, I appreciate that so, so much. It's been a fun ride and um, I've really enjoyed doing it and I'll see you in the next one.